Is it possible for us to lead a life of forgiveness in today's unforgiving, fast-paced, complex and stressful work environment? I want to look more closely at the nature of the forgiveness which Jesus offered through his death with a particular focus on what it means for you and me at work. Forgiveness is perhaps one of the strangest aspects of the kingdom that we've been looking at. You see, our God is a God of justice, but forgiveness is the act in which people receive something that they don't deserve, even those who've done the most horrendous things. Where's the justice in that? In Luke chapter 23, we read, one of the criminals who hung there on the cross beside Jesus hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? Since you're under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The story in Luke is a story about three crosses, not just one. There was the cross of rejection, the cross of repentance, and the cross of redemption. It's an extraordinary story that illustrates the extent of God's forgiveness. Let's look first at the cross of rejection. One of the criminals who hung there said to him, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and save us. It comes across as a cruel taunt. Jesus had come as the savior of the world, and yet here he was hanging on a cross. In this criminal's eyes, that was a failure. A savior was meant to save others from harm. It never occurred to him that perhaps a savior could save people from themselves. All he wants right now is to get down off his cross. This robber at that moment was wanting to gloss over his transgression. He wants a miracle. He just wants something to happen there and then. He wants a quick fix. But God's not moved by our railing. He is profoundly moved by our repentance. When we turn from our sin and say sorry, when this happens, his forgiveness is irresistible. But the second criminal gets it. He gives the whole gospel in two sentences. Don't you fear God, he says to the first criminal, since you're under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we're getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. In that first sentence, we learn what forgiveness really is. The second criminal fears God. He understands that he's condemned justly. He knew to look inward and say, I'm a mess, please forgive me, and not Jesus, get me out of this mess. He knows his deeds stood between him and God. This criminal recognizes that he's getting what he deserves. Then in the second sentence, he addresses Jesus by his name. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And we know that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord, on the name of Jesus, will be saved. He knew that that name of Jesus was the saving name. He doesn't hear the taunts of the people around. He doesn't hear even the robber on the other cross. Because when we're focused on Jesus and the relentless love that Jesus has, then everything else is just tuned out. The first person truly to understand what it is to be justified by faith in Jesus Christ alone was a robber on a cross. A strange kingdom when a robber is made righteous and becomes the first citizen of the kingdom. In those first few short sentences. That criminal believed, repented, confessed, preached, trusted, loved, and prayed. The second criminal isn't looking to get what he doesn't deserve. He's simply looking to Jesus in recognition of and repentance for his guilt. He asks only to be remembered, 
But Jesus gives him so much more. Today, you will be with me in paradise. On that cross, Jesus took everything that tore your relationship with God apart and repaired it, giving you his extraordinary new life, this forgiven life. It was a royal exchange. He took all the mistakes, the brokenness, the rejection, the despair, and he took it on himself. He exchanged it for purpose, wholeness, and healed relationship with our Father, with each other, and with ourselves. He took the brutal out of your life and exchanged it for the beautiful. He took the sin of your life and exchanged it for salvation. In short, his forgiveness cleared the slate. Through our sins, we deserve death. But to those who repent, he forgives and gives life. Be like the second criminal and not the first. Face up to your transgressions. Acknowledge the full force of your brokenness. Only then will you be in a position to receive the forgiveness that Jesus offers. If we call on the name of Jesus in humility and in repentance, we will receive far more than we could ever have dared ask for. What a strange and beautiful exchange. We need to ask ourselves how we fall short at work. Are we ready to forgive and to follow the example of Jesus in the harshness of the workplace? Jesus forgave at the first time of asking. Remember, you can come to him today just as you are. Let's take a moment. There's power in confession, in laying down our sins before the Lord and turning from them. Take a minute to think about your own situation at work, when you snap under pressure, when relationships break down through no one's fault but your own, yet you try to justify yourself, when you focus on your own career progression rather than your colleagues around you, when you act without integrity. Take this time to confess your sins, to lay them before the Lord and to ask for forgiveness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. To walk in this freedom, two things are needed. Seek the forgiveness of Jesus. Don't delay. Jesus says, today, not the future. So turn again to him right now and respond to his forgiveness by setting the relationships right with colleagues at work. I know it's hard, but it's a small response to his relentless love in forgiving us. Not only does he forgive us, he restores our lives. And what a joy there is in that forgiveness and restoration. It's a beautiful exchange. <laughs>